Okay, so this is question number seven in fall 2011, uh, the final exam for that year. And we're told that a person's muscle mass is expected to generally decrease with age. In other words, as age increases, uh, we expect that muscle mass will decrease. Okay, using a 5% significance level, we're going to explore this relationship for women. So we have 60 women. That's my sample size. And they range from 40 to 79 years old, and we're going to measure their muscle mass. For this study, the variable age is doing what? Well, remember we just said that as age increases, we expect that to affect or to explain uh, muscle mass. So age is an explanatory, explanatory variable. Okay, letter B says here's a scatter plot. Give a complete interpretation. Okay, so we're just going to make some important observations about the scatter plot. One thing I can see is that it does indeed seem to have somewhat of a linear trend, okay? And it's negative, so that's important to write down. So I will say that this is um, approximately linear, and that it's an inverse relationship. That is, age goes up, uh, muscle mass goes down. And it's also important uh, to make some observations about, you know, how strong the relationship is. For the most part, it looks to me like these, these values are relatively well clustered around the line. I suppose they could be closer, but I might say that this is a relatively strong relationship. And then you might have also noticed that there are some outliers. Okay, and so it's important not to just ignore those. I might add that there are a few outliers. Okay. Great, so moving on, we're given some SPSS outputs. Let me clear the ink there. Okay, so we have all these outputs. Letter C asks us, uh, tells us that we have a subject who is 40 years old with a muscle mass of 102 pounds. Can compute her predicted muscle mass and then the corresponding residual. Well, the predicted, my y hat, by using the coefficient table, it's going to be 153.012, and then minus, and I'm using minus because the coefficient on age is negative, so minus 1.143x. Okay, so the prediction for this uh, subject number 10 means I need to plug in 48. So it's going to be 153.012 minus 1.143 times 48. If I do that, I get 98.148. And that's going to be my answer for the predicted value. Now careful, because we want to make sure we include our units. So this is pounds. Okay, to find the residual, just as a reminder on my yellow formula card, this is the regression section. A residual is my observed value minus my predicted value. In this case, that's going to be she was actually 102. That's what was observed. And I predicted 98.148. And if I subtract those things, the difference is 3.852. Again, remember to include your units. Excellent. Okay, moving along. Let me erase that ink. The correlation between age and muscle mass. This is going to be a little bit difficult because I'll have to shift back and forth, so bear with me. Uh, the correlation, right, is my R value. And if I look at the table, here's my R. But remember, we have to be careful about R because we have to look for the coefficient to see if it's positive or negative. I could also just look at the graph, right, and see that this is a negative relationship. So my R has to be negative. Also, my coefficient on age is negative. So that means my R should not be 0.818, but negative 0.818. Okay. The nutritionist would like to assess if, multi if muscle mass generally decreases with age, state the appropriate hypotheses to be tested. Well, remember, if we want to see that uh, there is a relationship, then we want to see that beta uh, is not equal to zero. Okay. Or, excuse me, 
the null hypothesis would be that beta equals zero. And what we want to see is if, uh, as age increases, uh, that muscle mass decreases. So we want to see if the relationship is that B1 is negative. Okay. So give the test statistic value that would be used to test these hypotheses. The p-value is less than 0 0.0001. Because we have a one-tailed test, we can't use uh, the F statistic. So if I scroll back up to my output, Here's my coefficients, right? Uh, and on the age variable, it is zero. Okay, so that's pretty simple for me. Let me see if I can get this back in the right spot. Good. So the test statistic value, I did not know what that was. It was 23.276, okay? Er, sorry, that was on our constant. On our age, it was negative 10.811 negative 10.811. Okay. And the p-value, or excuse me, it says give the distribution that was used for finding the p-value. Well, we just used the t-statistic. And if I look at my yellow formula card, okay, notice that when I'm testing for beta 1, okay, that my degrees of freedom for the t-statistic is given by my sample size minus 2. And remember from the question we were told that 60 people were surveyed, which means my degrees of freedom is going to be 60 minus 2, which is 58. Okay. So t, 58. Okay. okay. Letter F says that before we assess if there is significant linear uh, relationship, we should check some assumptions. Use the plot to answer the bulleted questions. Okay. Plot A on the left is used to assess the normality of the true errors, the true difference is y minus uh, r population equation for all possible pairs x, y for this population of women. And uh, that is true. Notice that what we're given here in plot A is the QQ plot of the unstandardized residual. So what we want to do is see if the population or the true errors are normally distributed. Okay. True. And uh, it says that plot B on the right is used to further check a condition. Complete the statement below to correctly state that condition. Well, what we have here are the residuals on the y-axis. Okay and we're checking to see them over age. So when we do a plot of the residuals, what we're doing is to see if the true errors right, uh, are constant and that they're not changing over time. Right? We want to see if they follow a horizontal band evenly around zero. So what we're checking to see is that the, res the true errors are constant, should be constant. They don't change over time. All right, so as I continue to scroll down, I will clear the ink so it's a little bit clearer. All right, letter G says the researcher was going to use the regression equation to estimate the muscle mass for a 35-year-old woman. Uh, briefly explain why this should be avoided. Okay, and we can see that uh, when we go to our graph, okay, our ages, and our question told us, right, that we were taking people from 40 to 79 years old. 35 is not within our sample, uh, so our equation was made for 40 to 79 years old, 9-year-olds, uh, so to use it to predict for 35-year-olds would be inappropriate, okay? And we call that extrapolation, okay? So the answer is uh, why this should be avoided is because it would be extrapolation. Okay. And letter H says the first interval estimate made was a 95% confidence interval for the mean muscle mass for all 48-year-old women, which went from 94.6 pounds to 101.7 pounds. A second confidence interval will be made with 95% confidence, so the same confidence level uh, for all 57-year-old women. Without computations, briefly explain why this second confidence interval 
will be narrower than the first. Okay, so note that the confidence level is the same for both. The difference is where the confidence interval is made. Confidence interval 1, so or confidence interval A, is made uh, for all people with 48 years old, is made for all people around 48, and confidence uh, interval B is for 57. Okay, so we just want to see, based on that difference alone, that one is made around 48 and one around 57, uh, which will be narrower. In fact, it tells us that the second confidence interval, confidence interval B, will be narrower, and we have to see why that's true. Well, if we look at our data, we're told, right, up here in the descriptive statistics, that the uh, mean for age is 59.98. Okay, so the mean is roughly 60. Okay, if I go back to my question, there we go. Uh, Right, our mean was 59.98. And we know that confidence intervals that are made closer to the mean value will be narrower. And since B was closer to the mean, okay, that it's going to uh, have a narrower interval.